Uh, you know, today I can tell you for a fact this is going to be a hell of a conversation because I have with me a Kopi Kaki that is synonymous with food. It is synonymous, he is synonymous with Makan and uh, Makan Sutra. Now you know who. I have KF Sito. Yo, hey, in the house, in the house. In the house. What's and, happening, man? And he, uh, you asked for uh, Chinese tea. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Diao we yi, gave Diao you. Tell you. Tell you. And we gave you. A brand, yeah, it's called <laughs> Revenge Chinese Tea. You know, when when you when you don't order your your kopi or tea or especially your Chinese tea properly, and then the fella come back, it serves you with <laughs> Chinese tea with silk on top, ma. Then you know it's Revenge <laughs> Chinese tea. Revenge Chinese Revenge K N N Chinese Tea. But we got, I got, I got to do. I gotta do our sponsors justice. Okay. Revenge Chinese tea did not come from them. Okay. <laughs> Phew. However, Phew. however, the sandwiches we got on the table. Okay. And my kopi oko song today uh, is from kind courtesy of Kaki. Kaki. Okay. Yeah. And they're located at AMK Hub 53, Ang Mokyo Avenue 3, Basement 1, Units 51B and C. Thank you once again, Kaki, uh, for making sure that. My, I at least have my kopi today as well as some makan makan. Coming back to KFC though, speaking of makan, you seem to be quite an advocate or defender of hawkers. Yeah, advocate is the word, man. Advocate, huh? Yeah, and yeah. All, the, all the food guru and all that, you know, that, yeah. Advocate, you believe in that because it's not just about deliciousness, it's about a piece of who you are, our industry, mm -hmm. our, our culture, our brand. Singapore, specifically, the Singapore brand would be our hawkers. Yeah, you, 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 being an, advo being an advocate for um, street food is, isn't just about representing Chakwiti or Nasi Lama, it's the people behind it, it's through the people. Hey, you learn so much more about your country and yourself. You know these people stand down there. You look at what 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 they went through. Their their forebears went through, and then they gave this culture on a platter for Singapore to be so bloody proud of at such a ridiculously low price. Mm -hmm. We are we are bloody lucky, you know. Mm -hmm. And and yeah. So so you would say that Singapore actually part of our culture would be the hawker the hawker culture yep. that really is synonymous of making our country a brand as well, which is up for a UNESCO award. Um, I think later this year or at at oh. the latest early next year. Wow! Yeah, we did the. I think last year they filed or uh, 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 two years ago they they did a campaign and all that. And, mm -hmm. um, I think UNESCO sure gives you a award one. Uh. You've traveled. You've traveled quite a bit. I know. I've, I've read your bio. And of course, naturally, for food. Oh, yeah, yeah. And have you actually experienced the hawker culture anywhere else besides Singapore? Not with this kind of slick operation, government, people, industry. Uh, I'll give you a simple number. Mm -hmm. you know, Singapore is only like, you can't even drive straight for one hour without hitting water right, in Singapore. <laughs> you don't have to hit the causeway, then you go JB already. Right? You, you can't drive straight. So very small. And in these small places, her government has issued close to 30,000 street food licenses. 30,000. And you talk about hawker centre, yeah. like Maxwell, Chinatown and all that. Right? Mm. Those are public government-owned hawker centres. They only house six thousand stalls. The other twenty over thousand are scattered food shops, go beat them, food courts, standalone mom and pop food shops. Mm -hmm. they, they collectively, you know, they give us this culture we are so unconsciously proud of. But I'm curious about mm. this because you know, Singaporeans love to go across the causeway, mm -hmm. and what for? For what reason? Besides um, shopping. Petrol. <laughs> okay, shopping. besides shopping. Besides petrol. <laughs> yeah. Uh, of course, it's food. Nah. Food, right? Yeah. And, and but shouldn't we, as you said, it, it, you know, count ourselves lucky that we have 30,000 of these in Singapore? Oh, very, very, very. I mean, we go there also because... Uh, I w um, JB food is is nice. Uh, it's a reason people go down there is because it's familiar mm -hmm. and the most important thing. Damn cheap. One dollar to three <laughs> ringgit. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, the when when it, when COVID nineteen hit 
our shores. Mm. And our hawkers ran into a lot of difficulty, right? Mm. I mean, of course, in general, the food and, food and beverage business across the island yep. hit into a blank wall. Uh. The first post I did when we went to phase mm-hmm. one, it says, don't you ever forget the hawkers. Uh. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are the times you really need to show. Because for, for, for starters, they can offer you food cheaper than you can cook at home and definitely better than you do at home. So don't forget that although they're a lot online oh selling this and all that go down there and support them imagine if you don't support them and within a month or two they close mm-hmm. then you go to your hawker center copy them next time hey, where all the stalls go mm. but during the circuit breaker they, they were allowed to remain open anyway they they, they had to do tapa. they had to do tapa, yes yeah. correct but <clears throat> do you think that they were very much impacted as opposed to say the yes, restaurants they were still impacted how so um People don't go out mm-hmm. because of the phase one fears. Suddenly, one announcement from a national paper, war, all the all the bugs are right outside your door. Don't go out, uh. mm. you know. So, um, so they ate less. They cleared out what's in the fridge, and they, um, so the hawkers were, uh, they were suffering. Uh. They were sitting down there, and the hawkers do not know how to adjust. Um, you know, hawkers do what they do every day, day in, day out, year in, year out. Mm-hmm. They buy so many kilos. So they just carry on buying so many kilos of ingredients and all that. And they cooked it and they sat there and they swat flies. And it was like a good two, three weeks, a month. In, then they realized, oh yeah, I buy too much. Huh? But do you think the authorities, they could have done more to help mitigate their issues? <sighs> Where should I start? How long is this show? No, it's long. Don't worry, man. Just say your piece. So, so I, so I said, you know, um, you know, all these uh, um, delivery, but stories, companies started came into the fray. So, so, I, so I said, it takes nothing for the authorities to easily put up all these stores, even if they want to protect only their government-run hawker centers. Mm-hmm. Put all every listing onto a portal and then click pump goes to all your delivery companies and as a aggregator you can go this um you can go um uh get better discounts mm. and all that for everybody and i says you know th- um and why aren't <coughs> and I'm, i i did this post about um other Groups coming together, little, little groups. I mean, a lot of people were out of work, so they gathered little delivery groups, part-time delivery, mm-hmm. and then they and then come together mm-hmm. and go and just go and you know deliver for the hawkers. But but you know, I the app it's a refreshing idea that the government could have done one. You know, hey, just set it up for all for everyone. Do you guys not remember that the government recently, not too long ago? Worked with Google and all our hawker centers are on Google, Google 360. Yes, correct, 360. Yeah, you can go and zoom, 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 pinch it. Oh, I want that. Yeah, and then imagine there's another button, click buy. Mm-hmm. So, buy. you're saying that they should they, they could have done that for us? Yeah, okay. But the problem, don't you think, is that a lot of hawkers, I don't know about now, maybe you can tell us later on on the show, but a lot of hawkers back then during the circuit breaker were not digital ready. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't take a lot, huh? you know. It's so easy to convince a hawker. I show you, I show you, cring, cring, tung, uncle, pay already. Mm. The hasn't even cooked yet. Mm. Oh, that's they, they want. They want to speak simple English. Right. Kaching. Yeah. When your phone rings, that means the money in your bank already. Mm-hmm. Okay, they cook, put it on the table. John can pick it up and send it. Yeah. So now that we're in phase two. How do you think they're faring so far? On average, um, the ones that are doing good mm-hmm. is back to about 50% business. Okay. Uh, ones in town, um, catering to town crowd, which, are, which everybody is working from home now, and mm-hmm. some um, travelers and tourists, or those that are struggling 10%, 20%. What tourists, man? Yeah, so There's no freaking tourists, tourists yeah, man. Yeah, like my gluttons, we are swatting flies. It's not like kind of ideas. Yeah, what, so what do you do then? 
come talk to the hawkers uh, so how can we do now you there's no more tourists you're gonna attract locals who don't really go there mm-hmm. at all mm. so um, what you can't say hey, they're gonna go there anyway so we gotta sell something no you should be the reason that they come you know so think of new menu and and give them the best thing Singaporeans love okay scone so we come up with interesting dishes stuff that you can't get downstairs you know okay. what I mean and okay. then give them so for National Day I told the hawkers why don't you each come up with one dish mm-hmm. and then we we do uh, you know 15, 16 item thing combo two dishes 550 in view of National Day right Ooh, they came man like they were so it worked years. it worked so now after they, that promo so we're coming up we're upping the game nicer stuff Two dishes for eight bucks. Okay, that's cool. You have a nice beer and a or gin or lua. They have eight bucks. You know, <laughs> you go to a normal coffee shop. The go gin itself is already eight bucks. Correct. Yeah. That kind of stuff. So, oh, all right, so man. you just got to come up with ideas to lure them. Yeah, that's the reason why I brought you to the studio because we want to find out what you think, how you think things could work better. You know. Yeah, but hang that. I got to retract that. DPM Hang <clears throat> uh, mentioned about having a local tourism thing going on with the locals, by the locals, for the locals, right? And it, I think there's a budget accrued, uh, you know, there's going to be accorded to the citizen, I think. Uh, what do you think? Should part of that budget be here are some uh, vouchers for you to go mark at the local coffee shop? Kopi, I think, you know, I think and they did give some vouchers, right? I, I remember there was some given to seniors, uh, not to the seniors, but now that we want to try to advocate and try to raise at least home-based, homebound tourism from the local citizenry, wouldn't that be a good idea as well? It would be, la, but um, you got to curate the content very... You, you just can't say East Coast. Go East Coast and cycle. You know... What what is it? So you got to go dig down, dig deeper into East Coast, and then make people so make from sure the, the West go, oh wow! So make sure that the plan in the East Coast really works, lah. Correct. Okay. <laughs> it's not just an idea. We need a plan. <laughs> but since you said curate, yeah. So since you mentioned that term, on that note, you have this thing, um, this particular designation you give to your food reviewers they're called makan matas yeah once upon a time yeah. once upon a time yeah. so you don't have them anymore they're all online i know who they are and i tell them i read your things because mm-hmm. i respect so i follow them and uh, some of them just call me directly um give me so i don't really or because those when we started pre-internet mm-hmm. days we really have to pay and gather these people <clears throat> so now i track them and uh, i still do what i've always done 20 years 20 20 years ago go out there and get lost mm-hmm. and try look yeah, but smell, this is ask. about but this is about this is about cuisine this is about because food is a subjective affair don't you think yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, since yeah, it's yeah. subjective finding someone who can actually review or curate food for the masses that's going to be quite a thing isn't it I mean how do you spot one that's good you, enough to, that you can will, trust you all I mean, food yeah, will always be subjective, but <clears throat> I always tell people you may not agree with our rating, mm. but I'm, I will swear to you, I'll make you agree with our review. You know, when we say it's salty and there's a reason why it's salty, why is it? Then you, oh, I see. Yeah, you know, everything isn't just about baby, sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and spicy. This has to be an angle in you when reading, after reading, you, your appreciation for that cuisine, for that dish, for that person is heightened. That's what I call a uh, food review, not just ho jia, wo ho jia, you know. Okay, but if you have people, like in the past, your maka matas, these are food reviewers. You, wouldn't you, I mean, like I said, it's subjective. You, you, how would you trust this person's taste bud? Oh, we know them. You, they, they, a lot of them um, submit to us, and we go and try. And then you see, like, you throw what they recommend on the wall. You see what sticks. A lot of them, wow, this one, wow, five of them sticks. You're my person. Some uh. of them, after that, you know, like, they recommend their own uncle, 
my brother, my mother, and <laughs> father, papa, so thank you very much. Don't call so, us, we'll call you. So you take it, you also see whether or not the opinions of other people outside of these guys to see whether or not they are spot on. Uh. Yeah, some of them are very good, you know. Uh-huh. Oh, um, um, one of them, if, if Mi Ping is listening, I'm still, this, she's my number one. She recommend, she made, she helped us make so many millionaire hawkers she doesn't even know. And she's still struggling in her job in the <laughs> bank. <laughs> So she's struggling in a, with a job in a bank. You think she she would fare better as a she food will, reviewer? But she will go to heaven uh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> she will go to Poor, but she will go to heaven. <laughs> but you know, but you see, Sito, you you are a photographer by trade, mm. right? You worked with the Straits Times. Mm. You know, you you're a photo. You're a paparazzi. You know, in my book, anyway. Mm. I mean, you're a paparazzi. This is what I call photographers, anyway. Then. Uh, then all of a sudden you became this guy that is just doing this food thing I also asked myself hey welcome what should my answer this is like 10 years ago what should my answer be uh, if in 10 years time uh, Chris Hansen asked me this question <laughs> from, from photography uh, then more going to come up with. so I had this prepared answer uh, well from 10 years ago not that I probably projected I, already 10 years ago. I saw I saw your sister about us, I think your brother going to interview me in 10 years time so, so I'm gonna, I'm she gonna wouldn't be this. able to give you an answer too because you know what I wouldn't have been able to do so as well I didn't see me doing this 10 years ago somehow, and then alone talking to you somehow there was an epiphany somewhere <laughs> <laughs> so you see, I tell stories with a camera. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Going to photo sure. a little bit of writing. Sure. And the best stories to tell in Singapore, I mean, because there's no media in Singapore. There's no media culture <laughs> in Singapore, people. Okay, wait. Uh, wait, stop. Just can you please explain that? No media culture in Singapore. I mean, says, I don't I give mean, a fuck about this. Okay, 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 okay. I mean, there's, there's, there's a media company, but there's no media culture. Different, oh. Alama. Singa- hey, hello. A real country with a real media has a fourth estate. Okay. Google that. Yeah. Here, Singapore got prime estate only. <laughs> An on block culture. <laughs> But hey, I mean, I mean, that's one way of putting it. I mean, somebody yeah. once said, "Oh, the media has to cooperate because Singapore is very fragile, lah. Mm-hmm. So you all got to pack up, pack up, So uh-huh. okay, lah. So um, 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 I, I said, ah, enough. Uh, I, I want to tell stories, the safer stories to tell, makan story. Okay. I can take picture. I can talk, talk, interview the fella. I can. Uh-huh. Put a book together, put some singlish in there, and then, uh, and then next thing you know, wow, you know, hey, food guy worked, was a yeah. sensation. <laughs> bloody words! And then Vishwa put me on the TV <coughs> after uh-huh. he saw me speak drunk. Hey, you can uh. <laughs> And then, and then all hell broke loose. But then over the years, when I started, I also wondered what is my company all about? Mm-hmm. Are we selling food? No, I sell food culture. Then, then when you tell people, oh, yeah, we sell food culture, then you see their face going. Oh, I'm smoky. <laughs> <laughs> so we so we are doing food guides. We are doing uh, TV shows. Produce our own TV shows. Mm-hmm. We sell it to international broadcasters. We have our World Street Food Congress. Mm-hmm. And I call my good friend Anthony Bourdain. Oi, you owe me favor. You must. Oh, Anthony Bourdain. He's a very good friend of mine. I, I can tell you something now. Uh, that, uh, that I've never heard him say. He just told me privately. You know. And then it, it, it turned out to be true. Yeah. And I first, hey Tony, you big fuck, man. You, you know, you <laughs> shit, man. You, what the hell you do? I do, do everything you do, and I do more. No, what the hell? You don't even know. You call it, you know, it's chakwe tiao, and you call it chakwe shao. I said, what? <laughs> then he told me, he told me once, he said, I uh, said, hey, how, how, how was it? He said, when I started, you know, he exploded. So, bam, epiphany. He wrote that book, uh, Kitchen Confidential, right? Right, and right. And then right. Uh, it was picked up by Oprah. And then, whoa, and the New Yorker wrote about him. And then he exploded into the scene. And, yeah. And then, so what next? I'm waiting for my wife to sue me the minute I, I, I make a million bucks. <laughs> really? <And> it happened. <laughs> I said, million bucks, honey. Not very much. Right? He said, oh no, you must know our lifestyle. He was earning, he told me, 4,000 US dollars uh, uh-huh. as the head chef in uh, Forum Leal, mm-hmm. a French grease spoon bistro in New York. Right. 
you know, four thousand bucks. Mm -hmm. You know, you can I even hire EP? You know? <laughs> that's another story. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that we'll too. About yeah. And uh, and he says, you know, and then oh, he's he got no kids on his day offs. He will just be at home watching TV, drawing some, you know, smokes here and there. Yeah, he's waiting yeah. for the next payday or the, or the next crisis to happen. And uh, he say, pray. One the million bucks is fucking a lot, a lot of money, money. You know, yeah. you know. Okay. So what was I talking about? Yeah, you were telling me there's something he said to you that that. Uh... That's it. That's the one. Among other things, he told me about okay. the, you know his life. But he's he's very so. When I asked him to support, he said, "That's it." Because what we did at the World Street Food Congress represents the little people who gave the world the biggest food culture. Eighty mm -hmm. percent of the world eat. Uh, street heritage food, maybe a food cart on the street or in food uh, courts or kopitiam or hawker centers. Uh, get it? Eighty percent of them eat it, uh, eat at such places not because they want to, because that's all they can. That's all they can afford. Yeah. And it gave a lot of people meaning. People mm. recognize who they are through a, a tacos mm. or through a burger or through through noodles or whatever so that's why it's so meaningful for me to tell stories about this food culture <coughs> so tony came yeah he saw the setup in 200 uh, 2013 he saw mm -hmm. the whole setup and then we had we had minister is one coming to open the thing and he saw all the he was like a he was like a boy in a toy shop he went to say hello to all the hawkers and all mm -hmm. that and then he turned around and said uh, i want you to build my Botting, uh market, you know, hawker center. Then I look at him, you talk cock, you think so easy. <laughs> I think you will, yeah, yeah, yeah. They say, wait for it, but you wait for it. And true enough, two years later, um, um, Steve Werther, okay. who was doing stuff for Beyonce and Disneyland mm -hmm. and all that, mm -hmm. approached me and says, I've been asked to call you. It's so strange. From what, Tony Bourdain? Yeah. But Tony asked me to call you. So we met up so many times and unfortunately Tony why are you going to die like you? Why like you not now we're enjoying our hawker center. Yeah, so so he's gone now. He's gone now. So And you know what Tony wanted I said Tony, why you wanna do that? Uh -huh. Of course the other thing is that one thing is that it's 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 revenue. I mean he he's got a lot of beer money when he opens a food court, right? So I said, yeah. so, so I mean you and then he told me something that I realized this guy is so real. So, you know, he said, I just want to sit down there, entertain my friends and have beer and kopi with the hawkers. Mm -hmm. Like so we all this, do. La. So did this happen? Did Eventually, did it come to, to fr its fruition? It was nearing, nearing the after that. Uh, some, I think they had their own internal issues and all that. And uh, mm, um, quite a lot of internal problems. I not too privy and don't tell too much talk too much about it but it's just sad um, because it's not rocket science to build that I want to see that place that he showed me Pier 57 um, behind Chelsea in New York I said, mm -hmm. it's huge a place he can he was aiming to put close to a hundred stalls there wow. and he had a he had a uh, he, he mandated uh, one half of them to be from Singapore because Singapore hawkers got money they won't sleep on they will sell 24 hours and, uh, you he really said that he wanted half of, half of his space from, yeah. filled with Singapore hawkers yeah, you see the way they work Whoa, slick holy man. shit slick man no central kitchens out. everybody GIT cooking buy the ingredients go there cook sell until finish go back sleep the next day over again and then he says I just want to have beer and coffee and talk to them. You know, you know how hmm. real can you get? Uh, so, but no, you pick this off then. Pick, pick, pick it off. Pick it up where he left off. Uh, there is talk about it. Uh, you, uh, you, you will hear about it. So there's murmurs and whispers, whispers about mm -hmm. one of the main fellas. You know, wanting to continue where Tony left off and want to bring the band back together. Well, wow, that's so, cool. So I'm looking forward, but uh, he's, uh, you know, all these. Um, of course on hold because of COVID yeah sure sure. so I really hope it can happen and I hope to make an announcement soon well I look what, forward to that man it, but the whole world will look forward to it oh it's freaking stunning, hell yeah stunning, freaking stunning. hell yeah. Yeah, yeah but but I, I want to pick up on something you said quite interestingly mm. because when he, you said when Tony Bourdain said um, you know I want you to take my Bourdain brand here and you I don't kind of talk cock like, ah, you know yeah, tell yeah, you yeah. I'm more fella come here yeah, right yeah, yeah. And 
the the point is you said you worked harder and yet he gets more of the fame and glory how is that so not as if you didn't I mean, get your name across I, the if, oceans if as well. I am a New Yorker I'll be fucking big man. <laughs> <laughs> I can speak English in chinky accent <laughs> or I can pull a New Yorker accent um, uh, I think in life I mean there are a lot of people who are talented there are people who are way more talented than Tony but you need that break yeah, yeah. God only has so many breaks to give yeah. people you know yeah. so sometimes you know I just keep trying something will come along you know but you got to venture a way out of our own shores yeah, for that to happen but you I do what I do not because oh I want to be Tony because I like what I do and I'm not I'm, I'm not rich I'm not poor either. I, f- I fucking enjoy what I do every day I wake up you know everywhere I go and eat something it's fucking work you know mm-hmm. I eat the thing I slurp up the whole thing and well, I imagine it. what well, to no. do with this plate <laughs> I say fuck <laughs> What to do with the plate? Yeah, what to do with I eat a so wow I think I can get I can get fame and money to this and recognition. You know, so we can really do that now. Good really spot to be in, huh? Enjoy. And and it was a job nobody willing to hire me for when I and I had this idea, so I hired myself now. Mm. Yeah. Now that's where I'm going to go back again to what I asked earlier about. You said you had an epiphany 10 years ago because you thought Chris is going to be asking me this question. Actually, I didn't get a clear answer. Because you decided to go into food reviewing, turn it into a brand, turn you into a brand, but you had no background in culinary. So how how would anyone take someone... I'm going to be really brutal, brutally frank about this. How would someone take your review with seriousness and no, I mean, diplomatically? I mean, in life, you do it. I mean, there's nobody's going to certify you uh, to be a great uh, um, athlete. You, don't, you aren't born great. You know, I'm nobody's going to certify you to be a great uh, um, anything. Yeah, uh, okay. You keep doing what you're doing because, one, you like it, you believe in it. And you keep banging your head on it till something gives way. Something will happen if, because you believe it. You don't. You don't. I'm gonna plan success. You plan to do what you want, love to do. Something will come. Yeah. You cannot plan for success. But but you already know your trade. You know your craft. You you're good with the lenses, right? So uh, yeah. So so that's these are all the storytelling tools. Uh. Mm. Yeah. You know, I think my TV show. I'm the first to to. Do studio photography in a food TV show, and, all. and it was fun. Um, so, so you have your storytelling tools now. You need a subject, mm. and what's natural to me is food, lah. There, there was a recent article mm. that was uh, in the in the Independent, and you shared some details with them on why you felt that the NEA's response to Hawkers was inaccurate or wrong. What did I say? I say so many things. This is where I was supposed to ask you for the sake of the viewers and myself. <laughs> okay. okay, can you tell us what that was all about? What what particular? I mean, NEA. I mean, to begin with, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> NEA took charge, and the Environment Ministry took charge of the hawkers way way back then because hawkers was an environmental nightmare. Okay, they will start emptying their pots and waste water and grease mm. into the drains and it will lead back into your tap water no? yeah okay so that's why it's an environmental so the environment came in the reason that they built hawker center was an environment so all the all the hawker stalls in the hawker center go into the same long kang. yeah it's managed yeah yeah mm. now nobody talks about environment it's about culture <clears throat> And um, um, you know, for all the expertise you can find about environment and sustainability in that ministry, I don't think they're the fittest people to to run our hawker culture. Okay, who do you think, in your mind, would be fit enough to run the that? MCCY, mm. or MTI. Mm. You know, it's about entrepreneurism, mm. micro enterprise, one man set up one dish, the one dish entrepreneur who can provide jobs. Mm. Speaking of jobs, the recent announcement, man, from uh, yeah, man. the <clears throat> Ministry of Manpower, 
regarding the S-passes. So, which is, which is good. I mean, um, but uh, if you run the magnifying glass to the ground, it's, mm. it's quite ironic. Uh. So, up there now, you know, they want you to pay 4,009, is it? No, no, 4,000 4, 4, bucks mm -hmm. for an EP. Mm -hmm. Um... That means, hey, I can hire cheaper Singaporeans. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the thing is that a lot of companies out there want to hire senior people. Four thousand dollars is nothing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people, a lot of foreigners, they are earning five figure stuff. So what is four thousand? Exactly. Yeah. So once you cross, once you cross four zero zero one, um, the reality is you are up against the whole world. Correct. So. I, I don't know. I don't know if don't work or not. Um, maybe up there should have quota. <laughs> but no, up there no quota. EP no quota. S pass got quota. Mm. Permit got quota. Yeah. Because they want to reserve all these low jobs for Singapore. Yeah. It, it's it. I mean, two over thousand um, dollars now. Uh, S pass. I mean, I think they're upping it to two five to two six. Yeah, now. somewhere around there. Yeah. Hey, easily uh, a lot of hawkers will pay, a lot of chefs will pay for back of house uh, mm -hmm. kitchen assistance, mm -hmm. two over thousand, two thousand bucks. No takers lah. Mm. It's not that we yeah. chose our Filipino friends, or Malaysia, or Indian, or Chinese friends because we don't want to hire Singaporeans. Where are they? They don't want the jobs. They don't want the job. The lowest, I think, the lowest job Singaporeans will take. Uh, guess what? <coughs> in F and B, if they have half a brain, no, no, I mean jobs. In jobs general. in general. Yeah. yeah. What kind of jobs? Yeah, anything that's fairly able. Anything that's the more next white clue is the now? next clue is if they have a driving license, or grab, or even have a bicycle or a motorbike. Yeah, they'll go grab rather than clean up stuff. It's an easy two three thousand bucks for them if they just put in a decent you know eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. Uh, and um, anything beyond that, you know, people tell me, no la, too hot la, mm. no face la. Mm. You know, you tell, um, would Singaporeans like to go to a count, work in a counter and serve? Yeah. They want to be served. They want to be served, yes. Uh. That's what I feel as well. Even though you people are paying a fairly decent money for it, so... But this grab, this food delivery, not, I'm, I'm, I beg your pardon, I just can't say grab alone. The food delivery guys, people who, who you're right, uh, when Singaporeans run into a bind, I mean, this, this especially in these times, we start to realize this is a new phenomenon, isn't it? You've got people who either become grab drivers or, or you know, uh, or they go into food delivery work. Um, uh, but you've also said, which is where I'm, I'm going to come to this, I'm going to thread this a, a, along. You said, and I quote, I say, not only should hawker centre rentals not rise after renovations, but bring back low reserve prices and encourage new players, not just the younger ones. It means you're saying, correct me if I'm wrong, that let's welcome new players, younger people, into the hawker culture. Have to. Uh. But they don't want to... They don't want to get down and dirty. With all these stories about manpower, long hours... Which millennial or Gen Z wants to be a hawker? Mm -hmm. So this, is, so that is one problem too. And to to those who who slap me in the face, no la, I want to be a, or oh, throw away my degree. I want to be a hawker, no. Uh, but the reality is, look at all the new hawkers, mm -hmm. young hawkers. There's only about four or five things that they are cooking: a fish ball noodle la, you know, a couple of char fried Hokkien noodle down here. Pro noodle, it's so All these we, got, we got like five, six hundred things in our thing, mm. and, and some dishes not even associated with millennials. For example, have you seen a millennial cook 30, 40 dishes in a chap chai peng store? Unless they're Malaysians, no, unless they, yeah, <laughs> single, unless they buy from Central Factory, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's that's a lot, that's a lot of. Craft behind yes, that yeah. thirty dishes. If you don't thir you don't put thirty there, your yeah. store looks pathetic. Right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, you yeah. gotta have the color. Yeah, that's why. That's how you get the cues, man. That's how I judge it. When you look at them, sometimes when you study and say, "Wow, wow there's a science behind putting the thirty dishes within an hour." Yeah. So they come out fresh during yeah. lunch. There's a science behind yeah. it. You know, anybody study that? 
no school will teach you how to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you a simple dish like this will go to the robots. Hmm. So there is. You're thinking there, though there is space for young people to be hawkers, new entrants into this. Chances are we're going to see it die. Opportunities are there, but the journey, <coughs> the route taken, the guidance on that, <coughs> excuse me, totally absent. I think they. I think any has some. Um, what they call incubation mm-hmm. you know, courses and all that. Yeah, um, yeah. But they are really um, giving you funding to set up a hawker store in the hawker center. Um, but if somebody else says, you know, but I want to go, um, you know, I want to expand with my family and my extended group of buddies. We want to open chain stores in Singapore, even go to the region. Nobody's going to teach you how to do that. No doubt. So this means... I actually have a question, but now that we're talking about this, I don't know whether it's going to be relevant. I'm going to ask it anyway. Now that COVID-19, you know, we, we're going through this right now, and it does seem we're going to come, on, in my opinion, my opinion, that we're coming towards the end. Okay? Um, do you think our hawker culture can survive this pandemic? Yeah, hawkers can survive um, way better than your fancy schmancy restaurants. Um, that seems so. Huh? It is, it is. I mean, they are your lowest common denominator makan culture. Yeah. Right? yeah. You know, when you, they, they are cheaper and they are easy, they are, they are affordable, they're everywhere. Um, they, they, they will come up. They, there will be some... Um, um, some will fall off the edge, uh, but large, by and large, many will survive. And then, when when the crowd start building up again, these people will come back again. Yeah, but because, then there's, yeah. there's also the question of there's also the okay, there's COVID nineteen, <clears throat> sure, during this pandemic, but after this pandemic is over, and in Singapore's medium to long term, do you see our hawker culture continuing? Hmm, I don't know. I've asked, uh, been, I've been asked that questions, and I and I made up some stories before. Don't make up the to, story this time. Just to, tell me to, what to, you to, really uh, feel. Um, frankly, uh, 50, tell me what you really feel. Fifty fifty. It will take quite a while for that twenty over thousand, thirty thousand uh, hawker stalls to subside. Uh, on the one end, you think if let's say suddenly overnight Singapore. The equalized and everybody falls off the cliff, and there's only ten thousand hawkers, so which is cool, quite a lot for a little country like this. Mm-hmm. Ten thousand stalls left, half gone. Um, you mean a couple of things? Hawkers can now adjust their prices, sell it a little bit more realistic. They can sell you better stuff, earn a dollar more, fifty cents more, because sure. the demand is different already. It's a different sure. game. Um, then again, um, there will, I think, in future. Because there's such a high demand for street food in Singapore, um, people automate. They will, hey, let's cook it in a factory. You can buy that machine from Taobao, Alibaba, go and cook this. Uh. You know, that swirling thing. Oh, mm-hmm. I can put duck around there. I can sell those duck. <laughs> it's no yeah, longer yeah. artisanal, you see. Yeah. But then a newer generation who grew up with all this kind of robotic food wouldn't know. It's a duck, it's duck, what? Roasted, what? You know? But they never see the akong. Yeah, uh, who did it? Who oh, the guy pump air into the dark and then let it sit. Pump air into the dark. Yeah, when you roast a duck, uh. you know sometimes we eat a duck, the skin is so short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Duck. That's the best it part. It doesn't come like that. They gotta buy that pump and insert it here, somewhere here. Then after marinating, and I think they blanch it in a very special uh, stock of broth. Uh-huh. That will gives it a crispiness when you roast it. Oh. Then they holy crap! I never knew skin, that. <laughs> separates the skin. Yeah, it's a machine you can buy. The, the machine you can buy from Taobao, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but not the whole technique. And then, uh, and then, because in the past the fellow will blow, he will put a uh, those. Oh, that doesn't up. sound very right, <laughs> man. <laughs> Dude, I've seen them do it. In, you Beijing mean, and then mean, I say, "What well, this, 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 uh, this rage, this rose duck, uh, Beijing cow yao in Beijing, uh, from this, uh, this, this far out stall tastes like um, a great wall of China cigarettes." <laughs> 
Oh, what's that smoky accent? Uh? It's the cigarette, bro. Not the charcoal. Uh. But so, so that's why that Taobao machine, poof, you know, it comes no, out. No, so basically, wait. So the guy takes a duck. Huh? And he literally you uses can mouth you can to find these mouth. clips on YouTube. I remember making this. I, I I'm I'm a dunce when it comes to this kind of sh- this kind of <laughs> stuff. Okay, believe me. I leave it to guys like you, people like Chef Benny, uh, Chef Imran, to tell me these kind of uh, things. You know, uh, but so seriously, he blows uh, mouth to mouth into the no, beak, no, into, into the beak. They a slit somewhere around the neck down there. Holy crap! So that thing goes around. <laughs> then boom, <laughs> thing comes out like that. And then you roast it. Oh, then. You know, it's done well, and, it's, and he puts a platter of roast. But uh, even that's duck. automated now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. boy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but other than having it taste like the, like the Great Wall of China hey, cigarette come thing, on, right? man. At least it's got a smoky, smoky you know, taste, taste to, the, to, the, to, the, to the duck, yes, right? Correct, I mean, correct, come correct, on, correct, man. It's like correct. smoke stuff, you know? Like that one. Um, I love that one. Um, Kaylee. Oh, yeah. Oh, and that's smoky. Now it's all machine <laughs> and all that. Yeah, you I mean the machine can do stuff like that now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just as you said, the top of machine thing. Oh boy! So if that's the case, is it with with the younger generations, um, that's just likely not going to continue this wonderful tradition of ours on culture, of culture, mm-hmm. culture for us. And then now with automation and all that, it really looks kind of bleak, in my opinion. Which is why I, you know, my own in 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 my ways and as as an advocate I want to protect this artisanal value so that with this this UNESCO thing won't be a joke right yeah but you see the other thing the other factor that could also screw us up for where the hawker culture is concerned would be rents wouldn't you think yeah um, I mean fucking crazy isn't it I mean two years ago I put out that story the expose about how the social enterprise hawker centres uh-huh. are the least social enterprise in the world right? They I think I have it here them, man they, have they here. charge the highest rent among all of them they do nothing just collect 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 yeah, yeah. so so I you know went in my guns are blazing you can't do that you know a ho- normal hawker stall in in a public any run ones cost about thousand thousand dollars you can mm. make for them these fellas come with a package of four thousand dollars in 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 hawker centers even the bus don't go to you know like mm. far corners in in jurong and and, and pasiris yeah and 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 then i said where, where's the social enterprise mm. So you're supposed to give back to society yeah, yeah. This and that, right? And yeah. You can make money, mm. but you've got to be clever with it. Like, mm. like they do, uh, doing, the guy doesn't even look like he's making money, but you can make money, but you don't come out blazing 4,000 bucks and I want 15% GTO, 10% GTO, and I want this, that, that. And after all that, hey, by the way, you're supposed to sell your dishes under three bucks. I say, how can? <coughs> so that's, and then that's, after there's a public outcry, then they uh, brought the prices on. So I'm still monitoring. Will will this new management thinking um, sustain hmm. and and spur interest? But don't you think across the board, besides the food business, across the board, rents are just a bit, not a bit. Rents are crazy. Yeah, yeah. Singapore rents are like uh, you know I don't know. How do these people the, survive? How can they possibly room? have hope? Because when you run a restaurant, I mean, heritage food is mm. big now. Even restaurants are selling it, right? Mm-hmm. You know, restaurants' idea when Nasi Lama is to put a lobster on top. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just it's 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 screwing up my brain now. I'm just seeing you know, You've uh, had it. Are you? No, no, I have not. It's screwing up uh, my brain. Anyway, the whole image. They are up against the hawkers. So when somebody sees your dish, you're not different or something. I must well go to the hawkers and eat, right? Because this is where the birthplace is, right? Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. the guy says, "But I have to because people love heritage food. My bloody rents is." Reed sky high yeah. Reed sky yes. of rental Correct. the more you make the more you have to give you know, like yeah. charity and that yeah. now how am I going to survive yeah. so a lot of the, the the number of restaurants that are falling in all the malls are crazy man. Yeah. and all this high uh, like, Buso, huh? oh, like rotten bloody mm, jackfruits man yeah, I tell man. you really um, yeah. I feel for them I mean they have to let go so many people Mm-hmm. Uh, and and I don't know how they're gonna come back, you know. Especially if it, nobody sits down and rethink mm. this pr- rent pricing policy. Yeah, you see, with or without 
the COVID-19 situation. <clears throat> it, the rent issue has is, is, is been a kind of perennial issue, don't you think? So we, I did a focus group with some people in the industry and uh-huh. then they said, you know, sometimes they sign contracts with the landlords. It's always one way on now. Yeah. 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 They, they will say, yeah, sure, there's another how many percent for promotions, right? Hmm. Yeah, promotion is what? One stupid sticker on the wall. Oh, wait, wait, that one's new to me. You mean, yeah, they I mean make when, when, you, when, you, when you sign up, they make you pay for maintenance, they make you pay for AMP, oh, okay. rent, and then profit, and then my mother's birthday cake, fun, <laughs> and party, and all that. <laughs> it's up to them to say what promotion is, up to them to say what. Uh, <laughs> What not mother la, not mother la, father la, father la, <laughs> not mother, father la. Mother, father, birthday cake. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> Timba. So, what so, is a damn good Timba, by the way? My, I mean, I, I read my contracts, I'm very fair. I mean, if, if, I'm, I'm, if I'm charging my hawkers, uh, to do um, um, promotions and they expect me to do I do it mm-hmm. I go down I discuss dishes I take the pictures I put it on social media I call my fellow blogger influencer friends you go to the media you get up that's my job I'm paid to do it I've got to do it yeah, yeah. but sometimes <clears throat> I mean, I've, I've seen some of these other malls they work with <clears throat> all these vendors and, them, and they say promo and they take a percentage of your, your takings to do A&P and then it the, and then I ask, where's the AMP? What's your, what's your, what's your, uh, you, uh, your opinion about that? I mean, these guys who give, do the promos to them and take a percentage of it. What's your opinion? Do you think it's ethical? Do a freaking good job out of the money. You but you think it's ethical? It, you must. Yeah, I mean, it, it's everybody's job. I mean, if I go there more and more, oh, we are. Uh, a fantastic location we got you know, 50 million people per hour blah blah blah, blah. you know show me the numbers and mm. if you're saying a promo say what you're gonna do and what you wanna achieve mm. but but usually you feel that they don't do don't such do, a good job don't do such a good job uh, up, to, up to what they are actually asking for yeah, in the split uh, because, of the money because in today promo is a new game altogether you it just, is yeah you just can't say I put one post up across all the five six uh um, social media and, and, I've done send, my part. Yeah. and then go and spam all the media with uh, yeah. release and all yeah. that and I, I still get those releases and I say no no the game has to change mm. and how should the game change it's more personal now mm-hmm. if you want to tell people story about uh, who you are what you want to sell and what you want to do you, there's a way to sell it to approach it that will make people go oh yeah Oh, yeah, yeah, man, I don't mind. Mm-hmm. It has to have that personal touch, not some, oh, you know, once upon a time, boy, this fella fell on the sky and, he, <laughs> and he's God's gift to to culinary. <laughs> gonna put this glittered stardust on the dish and all that, bro. Or, 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 or throw salt. Yeah, like that. And, uh, <laughs> and the fella gonna smoke his, go, uh, uh, smoke uh, his duck. Uh, you know, smoke his uh, great wall cigarette and blow into the. <laughs> And fifty bucks per dish. <laughs> Personal. It's social. If you believe in social media, yeah. don't forget the word social. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you wanna use social media, be social. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um You see la, I laugh so much until I lost my bloody train of thought. Nah. You see, it's just a damn problem when we're having too much fun. Oh your question, your question. No, no, all, no, no, all no, no. don't all redundant. Back, no, 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 I actually threw most of them out. <laughs> the yeah. Just um, take it, la, just Yeah, of course, of course. It. Which I'm 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 rolling with you. I'm having a good time. I hope you're having fun too. Um no, you know, we the world's gone through this pandemic uh, going through this pandemic. And um I mean being an optimist, we all will climb out of it, sure. Um, we cl- we climbed out the Spanish flu. We, we'll climb out of this one, but we can't. We, but for, for for sure, we should be definitely prepared for the next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was... What do you think the hawkers ought to do? I mean, in preparation for maybe. What can they do? I mean, years later, carry we on, carry on what they do up the hygiene safety game. You know, hire people that can clean the. I mean, the, the other one is uh, yeah, why do they keep hiring old people to clean the worker centers. Uh? See your face. You see your face. You think you see them clean a uh, hundred? You want to give them five bucks, right? You know. I wonder why you want to reserve those jobs. It's dangerous. 
to clean hawker tables. They're oily. The floor is oily. People are carrying hot soups walking around. Look, man. Dirty, you know. Why? Huh? They shouldn't even be working in those jobs or <sighs> working, period. You know, I, I, I can't stand it when I see an auntie hunched over or an uncle hunched over hobbling and clearing my crap from the table. You know, I, I do sit down, sometimes I go lunch after lunch. Uh, you know, I just want to miss the crowd and sit down and talk to the hawkers. And I talk to these cleaners, you know. Uh, and then, you know, I don't know who's uh, famously said, oh, but these old, old folks need an exercise, right? Oh, and gosh. then then I said, Auntie, you need exercise. You're home bored. I said, Who want to take care of me? I earn six hundred dollars for how many hours? Four hours a day, and then I cannot get by. I have to do OT. She put another two three hours on there. Then I can get by. I said, is exercise the last thing on her mind. You, you know, know. So so I was, and I said, Why don't you give it to the these jobs? To people who want it from the region who will happily take your thousand, two thousand dollars and yeah. do a freaking good job, man. Yeah. What? what? Yeah. No, no. Want to reserve for Singaporeans. Yeah. That <laughs> man, that mentality about reserving, uh, even hawk. I mean, our hawkers mm -hmm. centers rightly okay reserve for Singapore. Once upon a time, it was reserved for Singaporeans because it was the entry level, sole proprietor business. Yes, correct. Entrepreneurship. Mm. So yeah. People couldn't get jobs, but they have a they can cook a dish. So you go to the hawker centre, but mm. that change, the thinking has changed. You know, people are spoiled. You know, once yeah. people spoiled, you entitled. Know, even at these times in COVID, people are still choosy over jobs. You yeah. know, so um, I yeah. think yes, still reserve the ownership of a hawker store for Singaporeans, rightly so, but allow them to hire foreigners to help ma. Yeah, you know, uh, to go there, it's, it's like. This if if let's say we hire folks from other countries, uh, you know, Indonesia, Philippines, China, they're going to help the 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 public hawkers clean, wash, cut, boil, blend, yeah. you know, and and at the same time learn how to prep. Of right. course, the hawkers will do the finishing touch. Right. Well, two things going to happen. I mean, um, then people would say, hey, yeah, hey, don't mind. Nah, I, I can I can hire foreigners. Not bad, what you know. Mm. I don't have to pay an arm and a leg, couple of thousand bucks. This person will come, and a lot of people from in the region for that kind of money, happily they will take this job, and that's one. It will encourage more people to step up and say, yeah, I will, I will consider, you know, uh, sustaining this business and and ditching my mm. my degree of whatever, and and the other one is. When these people are done with their stint, let's say the government says you only hire them for a two-year contract, you know, by the time they finish, this fella, he learns enough, he can do two things. Boss, I partner you, I bring you back to my, to open stall in Vietnam or, or, yeah. or Philippines. Yeah. You know what's going to happen? We are exporting it's, our food, cult yeah. food, food, food culture. Food culture. Yeah, that's why you see every people, every person or every colour in, in, in Singapore cook Angmo food, man, just like that. Yeah. Burger, pasta, anything French, I cannot pronounce what they can do it, no. <laughs> they can't even pronounce what they cook, but they can cook a damn good <laughs> a la vont <laughs> <vigel. laughs> That's exportation of <laughs> culinary culture, lah, brother. <laughs> Correct, not? Huh? Yeah, yeah. We should do that. We should do that. You know. Yeah, like I know some chefs, not to mention names, who cannot pronounce paella properly. <laughs> <laughs> but paella, paella, paella. But but taste them good, man. <laughs> <laughs> taste them good, but the guy can't pronounce it. Never mind, forgiven. You are forgiven. Yeah, jeez, you're not here for a grammar exam. <laughs> yeah, but you're so, right. You're right. Our food so, should go across. You know, I mean, the Malaysians have been always arguing about, oh, we are uh, we are the ones with the uh, you know our the Malaysians were the one that came up with chicken rice, uh, bollocks. <laughs> so so firstly, I mean, so allowing allowing foreigners to take up power the cooks and hawkers in Singapore. That's yeah. something we should really look at. Yeah, yeah. And 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 two, I mean. Food wars. I mean, food wars are the best wars you can fight. Yeah, when, fun. when two countries fight, both win when it comes to food. You say you do chicken, me too. Ah, you, you finger, I finger. <laughs> <laughs> hey, both, I also want to try. Yeah. yeah? Sure, sure, Everyone sure. makes money. Love. Whenever I've got controversy, in it, I will yeah. jojo. It's oh, like the good old Katong Laksa story correct, as well. Correct, you know? correct, <laughs> Everybody correct. made money. I man. remember once. I mean, seven, eight years ago, I wrote a little piece of my column in, in the newspaper and I said, you know, I think we should 
uh, apply our Yusang for mm-hmm. UNESCO award. Because we're the only ones doing it, apparently, right? Hey, when it comes to Yusang, everybody eats it all color and all. Everybody, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, Everyone, yeah. It mess up the table. But it's spirit. purely Singaporean, isn't it? So that's what I said. Oh. And then and then I said, oh, um, Bloody hell, I, I good did idea. a video. I did a video. I put it up mm. on YouTube before. I went to interview to the creators mm. of that dish, the Four Heavenly King. That time, three left. La. So they gave me the story. They were 20 year old hot shot cooks in in I think Cathay restaurant and they they revered their their master so well that they, they work so hard after work they'll sit down and think about dishes to create and sell to make more business to honor their seafood you mean the old Cathay building on the fifth floor the Chinese the, the, restaurant the Cathay once upon a time it was the place to go my office was on the 16th floor of that building that time uh, is, uh, I don't know which year you went but I'm talking about the 60s and the 70s oh there's no way <laughs> it's not uh, me no, so, the, <laughs> so it's a chef so, and then the seafood on it you know um, and then, then they said, oh, one night we came out, you know, the boys were drinking and mm-hmm. were talking about a new dish. Mm-hmm. And then they brought up this <coughs> Yu Sang dish, the original versions from Shuntak in Guangzhou. It came from there. They had oh. this raw fish and then simple salad. Then right. they said, no, we should shred colorful carrot and then we should go and uh, uh, dip the ginger shreds in sugar, tian 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 mi mi, in different seven colors, auspicious colors, and then there's this color, and then there's every dish, every item they put in there has a meaning and has a reason. Right. Um, for flavor, for texture, for color, for everything, mm-hmm. and then you know, as you as you do, you mumbo jumbo all like the stuff, and then you toss it for a good year. That whole dish is a culture. Mm. No matter how lousy it is, people will eat one. Right. So I put it up. I put, and then our Malaysian friends say, "Oh no, bullshit! La. Singapore was made from a bone of Malaysia's uh, Adam. You know, you wear <laughs> or everything down there is ours. What?" <laughs> so I said, "I said, okay, um, don't mind, ah. Can you tell me your story? Where it came from?" Then the they went <laughs> flatline. <laughs> I got a date and I got a person and all that, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> so that, that that was that. So uh. so how do you think? But how Malaysia has some damn good dishes, uh. they, they don't even know that they should be UNESCO fight. Huh. Okay, explains it a lot to me. Um, anyway, you you go to Malaysia. Every Malaysian will eat in a mama store. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That mama sort of culture the world don't have. I know. Only they. Every. That's why I don't say anything. Don't yeah. say anything. I mean, don't, I mean, don't, don't, I'm, I'm, don't I'm proud. I'm, I'm proud of my Malaysian <laughs> friend. I learned a lot from them. <laughs> and I'm a good friend. You should you UNESCO fire your mama. Just let us get ahead first. <laughs> we, we will always get first. We always get first. <laughs> so they what happened to the Yishang in uh, of the uh, application to UNESCO? Did it happen? Uh, no, no, I mean, um, we wrote it. That time, you know, it was like half in jest, uh, mm-hmm. but actually, it should be serious. Right? Yeah, it should, yeah. yeah, yeah Why yeah. the hell not, man? Yeah. It should be done. Yeah. Yeah. So, this culture thing, uh, food culture, I think the environment people should take it up. Oh, good Lord. Okay. You sure they're the right? No, okay, no, never no, mind. No, I'm not going to go there. I'm fun. No, 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 I mean, whatever it there. is, whatever it is, we should make an application. Maybe this hawker culture can include. Um, you know, it can cover this uh, because hawkers are selling yusang now. I mean, last time was from that restaurant, right? Now the best yusang you can tap out during Chinese New Year is from the hawkers. Mm. Mm. It's part of our hawker culture. <clears throat> okay, I shall bear that in mind the next time around. I should yes. buy any yusang during Chinese New Year. I go to a hawker salon and buy it. Yeah, I go to coffee out. shops to buy it anyway. Yeah, yeah, I do, you I do. Tap out, you put together. And <laughs> <laughs> so fun, right? <laughs> what so what 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 <laughs> Okay, so we, we've come to this part of the program, um, and it's called a quick fire segment. I want to be asking you quick questions, mm. and you can just give me a quick answer, can? Okay. Power up with some. Hey, wall up uh, the fella, don't worry, man. The energy wall up the as a quick fire. I see, uh. like, what's inside you want? Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh boy. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Looks like pig's ear. <laughs> This is one point in the shoot that Chris is going to be a little dumb, dumbfounded more than usual. Right. <laughs> Are you very, ready? Very Are you com- now fueled up? Very complex. It takes me a while to wonder what this is. So this, this is 
the complexity of our cuisine. Okay, carry on. Okay, you ready? Yeah, mm. mouthful or can? Huh? Okay. I beg on you. Yeah? Bam. Okay. What's your favorite hawker food? Yo, too shallow la. Depends no, on, where, yeah. depends on what day of the week where question. I wake up. Oh, is it? Yeah, I mean, you ask me. I know I'm asking you like every thought. day is a different. I mean, today what's your favorite okay, hawker okay. store? Today's to, Friday. To, today. Today. Mm, today. Today's Friday. Seafood. Seafood. Where is the best version of that? I would go back to Taki Sa Ho Fan to have his crayfish Ho Fan. Um, it's got two crayfish. Oh, I think I mentioned in my show today. The fellow has uh, his plate and he put smoothly blanched kway teow. Mm. Fresh ones. Mm. Then he he has two. He you know, cuts a crayfish and he splits two like that. Okay. Like that. Then he okay. puts the whole fun below that. Then he put four pieces of prawns on top. Uh -huh. he, he rings it with one vegetable. Very nice kailan. Then he slathered it with this brown sauce that's made by cooking the crayfish and the prawn heads. Oh. They get all the flavor. Then yeah, he adds yeah. a little bit of um, oh, yeah. um, spices and mm. the, um, seasoning. And then he thicken up with a little bit of starch. Uh -huh. Clear starch, not corn starch. You've got mm -hmm. to use either sweet potato starch or tapioca starch. It's got a clearness. So when you scoop it, he takes a scoop out of the pot, he slather over the thing. Mm -hmm. See man. the way you the way you just described the whole damn thing. I'm bloody getting hungry and the way you're chewing your maca is not getting I'm like salivating it. Thank and you very you, much, man. When you when you go there and order you watch the guy cook. Huh? Mm. You know what's going on, like. you mm. know you know what's that not? That's four play la bro. <laughs> what the oh, fuck I do that thing? <laughs> then the creator is absorbing all the sauce. Yeah. Well, and then the, he takes the prawn, he puts it on top, and the crayfish are his open up again. And then you <coughs> John the kill. <coughs> and then that's why people say it's orgasmic. <laughs> 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 Nobody can do this like KFC too. I tell you. Hey, quick fire too. Oh, that was the, that wasn't even a quick fire. It was like extended version of barrage, man. Okay, what's your biggest regret in life? Ah, uh, no man, no regret, man. Really? If I had to do it again, I'll do over. I'll do this all over again. Mm. Do, I would have done this earlier. A lucky man. I would have done what I makan susha way way earlier. Mm. Yeah. If you weren't working in the F and B industry, what do you think you'd be doing? Taking picture lah. Hawker. <laughs> <laughs> no lah. I mean, um, photography. To, I I I enjoy being a professional photographer. I I my my hobby photographer days were way back, way way over already. Mm. You know, but when you when you pay me to 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 go and shoot, I give you two hundred percent. You know. Mm. Um, but beyond that, photography isn't a hobby. Um, I would think of all kinds of ideas to get a shot done. Um, sorry, what's the question again? What would I do? Okay. Yeah, um, if you're not in FMB, I would be a. I don't know, man. Singer, actor, traveler. <laughs> <laughs> all which I can't do all very well. <laughs> but I can bullshit my way around. And I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. I, yeah. What's your favorite sport? Hey, well, although, oh. although, okay. although, although, I, 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 until I broke my leg, I was playing football, you know, uh, with Fandi Ahmad. No, don't play. play. No we shit. were in the in the same that that that, that oh, Milo seventy. No, oh, come on. Hey, I can <laughs> run like a mad dog. When I used to steal durians from the kampong and my neighbor at Upper Thompson, I can yeah. outrun run. their outrun their 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 that mud no. It was after my ass. That's why I could do my 100 meters in 11.2. That's better than Fandi Ahmad. And to outrun, to beat Fandi Ahmad, very simple. Tap and run like a mad dog. Wow, that's it. And then you chip the ball in and then I hit the ball. And after I broke my leg, it's stupid. Otherwise, I would be playing for maybe minimum, minimum, huh? Man City. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
Hey, don't not, play play not okay, Pampers, hello. Pampers SGI Roman. footballer, don't play play okay. Ah, uh, that's the reason why I say I don't believe because you're a SGI boy. <laughs> okay. I don't understand this. And we said, Sand pads <laughs> are jealous. <laughs> la, la, There's ma. nothing to be Not jealous even about. in town. The school is not, not even in town. Don't la. have yeah. to be. The, we're in the luscious east of Singapore. But you know. Consolation prize. I gotta tell you. I gotta tell you. I, I, I've hardly. As a matter of fact. I've never had a St. Pat's boy in my show. I've always had boys from my SGI. I don't understand this. So far, it's you mostly want, guys from SGI. You're not asking for a response, right? I uh, know. Okay. Yeah. I I'm know. just merely stating a okay, okay. stating a fact. Okay. So okay, you say so 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 you say play you, football. You, I understand. Okay, here we the, go. I mean, here we go. SGI people are everywhere. They are girls, you know. SGI <laughs> boys become girls, and some ministers, some corporate um, 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 scams, and they got everything. And then yeah. latest one is, I, I understand they are St. Joseph boys. They try to buy New Newcastle United. Are right? they SGI? I, I was somebody hey, SGI, you know this? SGI I don't boys? know. I understand. Maybe you can find out. We just and talked then about they have this picture yesterday. about Obama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we just talked about them yesterday. On, sounds, on, like on, on the other show. <laughs> sounds like an SGI boy. Sounds like an SGI boy. Hanta money. <laughs> you're ha- yeah, yeah, I think you're Hanta money. Yeah. So, so what are you saying? So, we, oh yeah, coming back to the quick fire. Mm. Okay, now, you say you play football, so that's your favorite sport? Yeah. Okay, favorite team? Liverpool. Oh, gosh. SGI boy and a bloody scouser. I know, I know you're a Man U fella. How right? you know? How you know? <laughs> it's either that lah. I tell you, Man U shouldn't be losing four kosong to Liverpool lah. Oh, hey, come hey, on. Hey, no lah. No, no, no. Man Just U. Just this hey, one Man time. U. Man U. Two kosong enough already Just this one time. Four you bunch of iron man. brands. You bunch Malu. of, you Malu. Bunch of Malu. iron brands go across the bloody road, you know? Uh-huh. And then you can lift the lift the cup doesn't necessarily mean that anything you know because it's after 30 years and we go graciously please go ahead no, and congratulations no, no, says, man okay la, i think your party you know? over like hey, 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 okay, enough for you party guys over. your party over Ayyo, okay da. quick fire tree <laughs> <Two kosong. laughs> You were a guest on the Martha Stewart show. Eh. Remarkable, man. Eh. So that was before she went into prison or after? <laughs> Just before, before, before. Eh? Be... Yeah, before, 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 before. Before, before. If not, you know, I would have worn that stripy shirt <laughs> on her wrong show. Jail, <laughs> Jail. Wrong with me, nah? <laughs> so, so let's say we talk about Martha Stewart, right? Mm. <laughs> hey, my God, she's kind of bland, don't you think? Uh, she's you know middle white American. She knows who her crowd is. She knows who she is. You know? auntie le, wow. Uh, she when it, when but she looks good from the waist up lah. <laughs> Cause you know most of the time like that the table is blocked the bottom part. But she was quite stunning for somebody who was already seventy. Is she? Nine when I when I when she interviewed me. You know when we had that, that, that ten Shucks. minutes on air. Well, she was very nice, very very professional. Uh, Not a prune, huh? Oh, I, 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 I didn't see the prune part. No, I'm, I'm saying she. Just, what are you thinking? She doesn't look you, like a prune. Uh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> definitely, definitely. What's this guy talking about, man? The prune, uh, you know, this part here. <laughs> oh, tell yeah, this age, one, uh. You this can called, tell. You tell people's age from here. My see? friend, any elbow, friend, elbow. Oh, elbow. These are not prune. Oh, prune, uh, prune. Uh, prune she different. looks like a human. How can she look like a prune? <laughs> if Martha Stewart were to come here to visit. Mm. Can you name three hawker stalls that you will take her to? Three uni. Hey, enough lah. Three uni. If, I, if I'm going to give you a whole, I tell, I tell ask what, you for a whole list, it's going to take forever. I tell you what's the easiest dish Top three. to seduce uh, any first time travelers, foreigners coming. It's chicken rice. You take it for granted, right? Chicken rice. Mm-hmm. But when you tell a story about chicken rice, uh, mm. you know the fellow. Oh, oh my god, that's what Bourdain did lah. When, when White or roasted? White. That the art in doing white things, mm. how they how they poach and then put it into ice water, ice water yeah. to to seal the Seals, jelly. Yeah, and then when you, why you want to seal the jelly? Before you put it into your mouth, the warmth of your palate will turn the jelly back into oil. And really that My wife makes it that way. Yeah, you and then the rice. You think you just put chicken stock? You mm. got to fry the rice in that in that in that combo. Yeah, and then you got to cook it in ch- uh, uh, um, the chicken stock with pandan leaf mm. and all that. And then the chili, then suka suka. The chili, the guy who came out at this knew exactly why the chili would work. Mm. You got to have that lime, that 
the, the dry and fresh chili <coughs> with ginger blended in <coughs> and then <coughs> you know the old hawkers in the in mm. back in the day to introduce a <coughs> excuse me a revenge revenge <laughs> and the revenge yeah. it's working for you um um and and <coughs> what they did in the chili sauce back in the day to that little touch of umami in the day. It's not just lime, chili, <coughs> and ginger, and garlic. Huh? There's something in there. You know what the old hawkers did? What? They snip off the S, then they cut off the offending uh, door apart. Huh? <laughs> okay. Our Filipino friends call it elevator. <laughs> <laughs> elevator. Elevator, my friend. Elevator. <laughs> chicken, chicken feet is called Adidas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then uh, um, um, pig blood it came in big squares <laughs> like that, right? Nah? Yeah, yeah. Beta Max. <laughs> <laughs> I I love the movie. That's the Abu Kaujia street food. Anyway, where was I? Uh, the Beta chicken, Max. I, yeah. Then they they took the chicken, they blended the thing, and they put it into the chicken, the chili sauce. And then you dip, oh, wow. So we actually eat, 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 eat in a chili sauce or chicken rice. Yeah, the old one, they it's blended the, they blended the elevator. The, the elevator. <laughs> they blended, blended the elevator. So you got Bishop's in nose in there. <laughs> elevator, sir. Okay. Beta Max. You see, like, quick fire questions. Here we go, <laughs> digressing <laughs> like mad. Martha Stewart, hey, nonsense. come to Singapore. <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> hey, it's, it's part of the show. Okay, deal with it, man. Okay, Martha Stewart comes to he Singapore. He has digressed. <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> Martha Stewart comes to Singapore. Mm. You take her or any tourist for that matter. Mm. Must be any tourist or must be Angmo tourist. Which one? There's never been or never tried. Oh, never been, never tried. Okay, mm. so across the board, yeah? Mm. Chicken rice is number one. Mm. Next, what's the other two? Um, something dirty and messy. Uh. Holy like, crap. Like chili crab. Chili crab's not dirty or messy. Ooh, uh, you try yeah, eating like, okay, chili crab right? before and spoon. But it doesn't look present. It still looks presentable. When anyway. Martha Stewart put it in her mouth. <laughs> that's, a, that's a cover photo already for the magazine. <laughs> <laughs> she probably have a helper who can pound the thing. Here <laughs> hey, you go, Martha. <laughs> Oh, third do, I, one. do I dip it in the sauce? <laughs> the third one. Third one. <laughs> third one. Third one would be uh, laksa. Why laksa? Because you watch them struggle. I mean, you take them to a good laksa stall. Um, you know, um, the good laksa only serves with a spoon. You realize? You know why? Yeah, why? Yeah? Uh, they, when you Makan laksa. If you go to a laksa store and they give you chopstick, ah, something wrong somewhere, lah. You run, you <laughs> run, run like the tsunami is just <laughs> down there. You run up the hill man, and then you pray. Laksa <laughs> is served with bihun. You know, what I mean? mm-hmm. bihun is quite chow smooth, bihun, right? Nah. Chow bihun. Now ah. they give this that 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 the uh, smooth slurpy udon type, which is all wrong. Oh no, that one sucks. Yeah. Now, you pick it up with your chopsticks, right? Yeah. Okay. The burger. Of no, what are you eating? Only the noodle. Noodle, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, after the soup butter you finish you throw away. Yeah. The idea that's why this 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 laksa old man, he was taught by some angel came to him and told him how to cook his laksa. <laughs> Serious a real story. This is a the Sungai Road Trisho Raksa fella. Uh, he, he he was cooking no what no business. And one customer came in, why don't you take this recipe uh, and then when you cook it uh, you must cut the noodles. Uh. See mm. why? And then you serve only with spoon for two reasons. One, you don't have to buy chopstick and wash chopstick. Two is when you eat laksa, you take a spoon, you scoop short pieces of noodles come on your spoon. Plus the yeah. laksa, the the gravy all gravy important. And then you 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 backhand hook up one um um siham. Uh, oh, then you oh, must backhand backhand backhand, oh, backhand the siham. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna flick the fella up. See a little bit of down kasom or laksa leaf and you go down kasom. <laughs> so why you not take it here there? Because because um you can watch her struggle, you can take chopstick and you can try to pick up the thing and then so what is this? And then Angmo Angmo, Angmo is this a soup or a noodle, no? Uh. 
I said, I think soup or noodles is two on, different things. Yeah, Pasta and soup is, you cannot <laughs> yeah, put together. Put together. <laughs> hey, what's this? Hey, what? <laughs> How do I eat this? <laughs> Linguini in <and> soup. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is soup or noodles or what? Soup noodles, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> what? This is damn funny, man. This has been such a funny show. Okay, Wait, this is a little bit more I need to ask you. Fire, quick fire, die down already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you could give your younger self some advice, what would it be? Ah, you know, I'm so perfect, I don't even know what to do myself. <laughs> <I'm> so... <laughs> what I would do um, as a younger person? Wait, do a bit more listening. Mm. Yeah. Okay. You know, you 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 got to um, you know do more listening, and before you open your mouth, you got to engage the brain. <laughs> Last time I was a mile a minute talker. I can hear a lot of things. You mean you're not a mile a minute talker now, lah? Now, <laughs> wow, mile be slightly. Me, what's man. eight eight, Come eight on. three quarter of a mile, lah? <laughs> mile two minute, lah. Now two minute, lah. Two minute, lah. I got two more la, final questions to ask mm. before we end the show, okay? <clears throat> what local food, in your opinion, is the hardest to cook? Are the simple ones to eat. Chakritya. Really? You know, I I I train hawkers <clears throat> to set up chakritya. It took me forever to figure out, you know. For so the one I suck up to is the late uh, Mr. Ng from uh, Hill Street Chakritel. Okay, yeah. You know, I know. I I, I talked to him. He's a very nice guy, and then he said, "You come, you come. I teach you how to make." And then I was the time a bit too. Yeah, I don't want. I don't go hawker store. People see me in hawker store, malu. I don't want to regret. I don't want to regret. Okay. Although he, on the spot, he told me within ten minutes, he told me, "Think this is this, this is this." His lard. He doesn't put his lard. In little croutons like this, on mm. he blends into a dust and he puts it into the thing. You cannot even see it, but you taste it. Mm. Secret. And then the sauce. He told me got so many stuff in there. Then before he could fully tell me the thing, he went on to talk about the all oh, the art of frying. See, I asked him, "Are hey, you fry, 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 fry?" Is, is there a time that says, "Okay, time's up." You know, you can go on forever. When do you stop? Yeah, yeah. He said, your nose will tell you. I said, what lot of Really? Oh, fuck, you're gonna learn that, boy. <laughs> what, what, what? Then they tell me, they say, okay, fry. What? Then he says, when you fry, uh, you buy the, factory, the noodle that come from the factory. Uh, first, first, you know, 30 seconds, you gotta fry the factoriness out of the noodle. Wow. Oh, loud. He, actually, he actually said it that way. He said it. I mean, it makes sense. Get rid of the factoriness. Yeah, you actually make sense because, uh-huh. you know, these factories, they put all kinds of rock, they preserve the noodles. So when you put it on there, the first thing I notice is he showers it with water. Yeah, yeah. So he's actually boiling some of that, that coat and then pop the noodles exposed. You, you remove the first layer of that film that usually coats all this factory. Yeah, yeah. And then he slowly flavors and he looks for texture he watched the the noodle brought up a little bit because it absorbed a little bit of noodles and then wither then you know ah then you inject roastiness into it all this you see the little ting tang ting tang is like oh wasting time right got technique one you know hmm. and then wow. i took him to an event uh singapore day in new york the new, uh, new york new york new brooklyn york. this is the second time with bruce brooklyn prospect park Mm. And then Mr. Ng couldn't quite speak English. And then the guy, right. you know, I'm more like, wow, set up kitchen, more like, put a fire. Then Mr. Ng, oh, you can't jump, huh? So I didn't know about this part. So uh, he put the fire under the wall. Like, yeah. Just put it down there, right? Yeah. Mr. Ng said, no, push it down there. Then the, the oh, he told me, anyway, when I fry, I I know where to push my noodle for heat and cooling one, or technique one. Huh. Then I said, wow, wow. Okay. Then the Ang Mo said, uh, oh, Ang Mo to do. Ah, yeah. tell. Then the Ang Mo said, oh, I'm going to put it here. I said, you don't go and tell a master how to go and cook his eggs. Like, you don't tell your grandma how to suck eggs. I'm going to tell the Ang Mo. No. Is that right? Oh, full of respect because I speak his language. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. So this person has been cooking noodles since before your mother was born. <laughs> <laughs> they, love, it, they love me, by the way. They love me. So go and talk to the guy. The guy, I can't give it to you. He'll tell you to do it in American English. No, but the thing is, 
the the did 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 it do well at the Singapore Day? Oh yeah, it it, it, oh, it did well. Hey, it went well. Hello, they were doing a thousand portions oh, in three hours. Wow. You know? The guy didn't even have time to look up. Every time you look up, there's eighty hundred people in the queue. You no, know? the almost like it, isn't it? No, no, it's for Singaporeans only. Yeah, okay. Yeah, only, we, Singapore only Day, bo- we only bo- managed to sneak sneak Bourdain in. Uh. Uh, I, I've always thought Singapore Day, yes, I know it's for Singaporeans, you know, uh, overseas, but I thought it would have opened up for also for the uh, locals. And no, the, no, no, they, okay. in that case, no. And then, and then you know, a dish, you look so simple and the sauce, there's like four things inside that black sauce. Mm-mm. You think you just go and buy one sauce from Xing Zhong and Point. And no, man. That's why when Bourdain first ate it, and I remember that quote, I took him to eat Chakui Tiao, he's, he's Still cannot pronounce it. Shakui Shao, <laughs> Shakui Shao. So I took him to eat, uh, and his what he said about the dish was like shit, man. I should have said that, not you. He took one bite. He says, "How can something so ugly be so good?" So we were all ready to bring um, that store to New York. It was it Tony ready, man. Mister Ng ready to go. He was so excited. Yeah, it didn't happen. Yeah. Sayang, eh? Sayang, big time sayang. So yeah, chakwe tiao is... And then also, you know, chakwe tiao, they do one, two plates at a time. They don't do a lot. Yeah, yeah. Only I see some hawkers who can do a bit more, like five, six plates. Yeah. Because they are very good at fire control. Fire off, only the egg texture off, your chakwe tiao is off. Wow, so, I never knew this, man, until you just, you know... I also never know. Uh, wow. Until you go and look and then you talk, you ask questions, you go, wow, this is not easy, huh? Chicken rice is easier. You respect, do, man, respect. Yeah, and then I remember the duck, you go, <laughs> <laughs> one, uh, no, yeah, that's man. another one. <laughs> <laughs> but you blow one duck, you know how many portions you can sell now? Blow one duck. <laughs> blow one duck and, and then one duck you can sell a couple of portions. It inflates <laughs> a duck. You can sell me a portion. It makes so much better. After all, they only $3. three dollars. Three fifty, they can complain. They can storm you away. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, you're right. I, uh, yeah. Well, newfound respect. What you've just given me is a new perspective, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. It's still there. It's Didn't living. Know, it's but... living culture, my friend. Thank you very much, KMC, for spending the uh, hour plus with with me as my Kopi Kaki. This has been Kopi with Chris. What a conversation. Lots of laughter. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. See us again, please, for the next one. Bef- uh, and until then, remember to share, subscribe, and like. Stay safe, stay sane. Catch you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye. Thank you.